everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about paths. Paths, 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 paths. Paths really help make an island and I think there are so many different ways to do them. So we're going to run through all of the different options today and hopefully you'll get some inspiration for what to do on your island and maybe even find something new that you've not seen before. I've had some help with this video so thank you to those who have featured today. All of their details will be in the description below so don't forget to check them out. But without further ado, let's get pathing. So for number one, we might as well talk about where it all began and that is with the in-game path. There are a couple pros and a few cons to using the in-game path and I'm going to run through them. Firstly, the in-game path is easier to lay in the sense that some of the custom design paths can be quite difficult to make them look good and effective, but once you've done them, they are worth it for sure. You can overlay custom designs on top of in-game paths and you can also plant things on top of them. So you can plant trees, weeds, flowers, which make them look super cute. They also show up on your map so you can see which way to go to navigate your island and also make pretty looking maps. Also, you get the cute walking sounds when you walk on top of them, which is just one of the most adorable things in the game. However, there are some cons with this, namely that there is a restricted amount of in-game paths available in New Horizons, custom design paths, there's so many of them, there's so many different varieties, and they also don't look as natural and can be quite chunky. So if you think about you want a natural looking island, a forest court island, an in-game path isn't always the best option for you. For number two, we're going to talk about inverted paths. Inverted paths are a really nice path designed to use, something a bit different. If you don't know what it is, it's basically a in-game path laid down and then on top of it you add in the custom path, normally in kind of a broken, sporadic way and this way it allows you to also plant flowers and weeds and things to really give it an overgrown feel. Normally this is done with a grass design path or a flower one but it can also be done with cobblestones as I did on my first coastal town. One of the great things about using this style of path is that not only do they make good looking paths throughout your island but they also look great for particular build areas for example my flower crown area I decided to underlay it with a inverted path. So they complement other path styles really nicely as well. So as you can see, you've got the dirt path next to it. Additionally, these paths also show up on your map because you are using the in-game path. So if you're looking to try and recreate that kind of map look, then these are great for that as well. And the final plus side is they just look so, so pretty. I really, really adore these. Next up, we're going to talk about path borders. These are a fabulous and easy way to jazz up any in-game path. If you're a massive fan of the in-game path but think that they're a bit too simple for you, then this is a great route to go down. There are so many custom designs out there that you can overlay, including flowers, overgrown moss, and even this lovely design which is on Alex's island. This is helping to create the illusion of a road path, but it's not. It's using the in-game path and a custom design over the top, which is very smart. One of the benefits of doing it this way is that it's a bit quicker and simpler than overlaying a custom design road path over an in-game path if you're wanting to keep the appearance on your map. The downside to these is if you're looking for a path which doesn't use many custom design slots, this probably isn't the one for you because there are borders for each section, each direction, and sometimes there are kind of inner path codes as well, which you have to consider so soon you can rack up those design slots. Additionally, sometimes these are also hard to place unless the creator has nicely kind of laid out which one goes where for you. Um, sometimes it can be a bit confusing to make it look right. 
Next up we have Diagonal Path. These mainly kind of mix in with in-game paths or custom designs to make a whole set, but I wanted to feature them differently as they are definitely a different way of laying your paths. So I wanted to showcase them and there's a few different ways to do them which I will show you in just a minute. But these are really nice. It does take a little while to get your head around how to lay them out, but once you've done it they are really effective and it just breaks up the whole grid system that is on Animal Crossing and makes it feel a bit more unique. There is a few different ways that you can create a diagonal path or the illusion of a diagonal path. AC and H Velvet here has done it with an inverted path which is super clever. There are custom designs that are just at diagonals but there's also this very special path which edges off the in-game path to create what looks like a diagonal in-game path which is super cool. If you are looking to create more of a natural island, maybe you're doing a spring core, forest core, you maybe want a more natural looking path as opposed to a structured path. These paths will definitely help create the illusion of a whimsical, get lost in nature kind of vibe. There are so many different variations of the natural path. There's some really cute looking dirt paths, which are a take on the denim underscore Mori 2 path. And there's also some flower paths, which will also help create that natural look overgrown if that's what you're after. There's even sand paths in this kind of whole style, which I absolutely love. If you're looking for some paths, definitely make sure to check out my Pinterest. I have lots saved, especially in this kind of style. Whichever variation you decide to go with of the path, you need to make sure that you lay it in a natural way and this is what makes them most effective. You do not want straight blocks of path, you want to make it look as natural as possible. If you're new to the path and not sure how to place it, I would recommend watching a video tutorial on this. Console Kato has a great video and so does Ryan FTW. Definitely recommend watching them if you're trying to use this path on your island for the first time. Unfortunately, when using this path, you can't actually place items on top of them, but with some of the paths, there are some really cute little shapes in them, so you can cozy up some flowers and some trees right next to the path, or even do some cute shapes where you have gaps in the middle. I really love that about this path and the natural paths. You can really go to town with shapes and explore a bit more. In contrast to the natural and flowing paths, there is structured paths. These have two main types. You'll find kind of city road paths with sidewalks and things, which are very realistic looking. You'll also have some brick paths where sometimes they have a different center path and then the outer sides are a different color or a different style. Either way, these look really great for cities, town areas. They're so structured. The downside to them is that they do take a lot of thought process with mapping and planning out your island. So if you're good at that, then this will definitely be a path for you. Also, if you're gonna underlay it with the in-game path and then put this on top, it can be quite time consuming, but there is so many different styles out there for this style of path as well. And I really love the different kind of contrast with it. They make great build areas as well, so setting up your own plaza areas, maybe for a market or something like that. Neighbourhoods look wonderful. There's also some really creative shapes in with these paths. Some of them have like circular areas, wavy areas or more structured, diagonal lines, just so cute and amazing. And the final path we're going to cover is smaller path, by this I mean one tile path, so this covers wood planks, dirt splodges, cobblestones, just anything that's kind of individual um, that you would use for a smaller area, so maybe you have a snaking pathway that you don't want to be so wide, and also maybe like a little walkway, something like that, something where it doesn't call for a large path. Or maybe you want to do your whole island like this. That's totally up to you. If you want it to be tiny and snaking, then that would look lovely as well. So guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you enjoyed this and maybe having a look at every 
hyper path together has given you some inspiration as to what to do with your next island which path is the right option or maybe you want to try something different maybe you've always done a natural path and it's time to venture into structured path either way i hope you enjoyed it have a great rest of your day i'll see you again soon with another video bye bye